We talk about this and talk about that. Shut up, stop running out, let's talk about facts. Live a little, laugh a lot, let's have some fun. Listen to Gina, she'll tell you how it's done. Did you know? Good to know. What did you know? Well, now you know. Never know what's gonna happen on the No Filter Show. Loud and proud, funny and cool. Say what you're thinking, that's her only rule. Be the change. Be the change. Come watch the No Filter Show. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas, online shopping made easy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the No Filter Show. I know you all love my song. Hey, that's catchy. I love that. I love that. So today on the No Filter Show with me, Gina Knowles, I have my friend Jerome Sawyer. He stepped on over to the other side to see me. Dun, dun, dun. Jerome, have you ever been interviewed on another show? Um, probably on radio, but nothing like this. No, oh, yeah, you like that? Like I'm very special. <laughs> very much so. I was going his show, so he know, he <laughs> couldn't try it, all right? <laughs> so, but today, we're not only going to talk to Jerome about a specific thing, what I really want to get the nitty-gritty of, which is Miss Bahamas, but I'm mm -hmm. going to talk about Jerome, because a lot of people don't know who Jerome is, you know. They don't? They only know uh -huh. the on-the-record Jerome, and the, the newest man yeah, Jerome, the and the TV Jerome. You, know, you know me, though. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to close all of you. Just a little bit. Okay. And some of the little things that we've done. Right. And guess what? For our head notes segment, Jerome's going to be our guest for that as well because he's very involved in head notes. Yes. So we'll be right back and see you in a minute. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas, Bank of the Bahamas, Quality Home Center, Dairy Queen, Kitchen Basics, Boss, BAF Financial and Insurance, Checkers Cafe, Doctors Hospital, Marathon Vet Clinic, Mesa Grill, Live to Fish, Lowe's Pharmacy, Riley Boys Auto and Car Rental, Ultra Games, and the Pediatric Place. Hey, hey boo, what's up? Right, yeah. Uh, you still going to the event? Yeah, I ordered my dose right now. Let me go you want. Okay, good. Me too. This is how it feels to consolidate your debt with Bank of the Bahamas. And this is how it feels to reduce your monthly payments. Come discover the new BOB, offering debt consolidation loans at the lowest rate in town. And guess what? You can get cash in addition to cleaning up your finances. That's how it feels. Apply today for your BOB debt consolidation loan. Terms and conditions apply. This segment is brought to you by Bank of the Bahamas, the Bank of Solutions. Welcome back to the No Filter Show, everybody. And as promised, we have Jerome Sawyer here with us. And Jerome, how are you? Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm good. Thank you for having me on you the like show. You like my sunflowers? I love are them. Are you jealous? <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> you know you love my well. I love them, though. They're very oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah very so nice. I want to ask you, I know that um, on May 26th, we had our Miss Bahamas, mm -hmm. and all sorts of rumors started Drama. about that. Drama. And I yeah, said, I got to get Jerome to find out the scoop. So number one, everybody was like, as, as usual, every single year is they cheat. Yeah. Then you was fired. Then I hear you resign. Then I hear this, and I, I, I'm a little confused. And then everybody say, where the money's come from and all that. So right. I said, let me get Jerome to sort this out. I always say I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Right. But then when I hear you get fired, I say, Jerome, get fired. <laughs> well, let me say something. You can't get fired from volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. So, okay. no, uh, I've never been fired from a job in my life. No, no, no. Um, I think a lot of the confusion came in. I've been involved with uh, Miss Bahamas organization, which hosts Miss World Bahamas. For the past 15 years, I've been with oh, gosh, the organization since it started. 
This year, I made a decision that I was going to take on a different role in the organization, not as public anymore, but work more on the production side and do some other things. So um, towards the end of the pageant, Michelle came out and presented me with a, an Invisible Crown Award, which the organization presents to somebody who has you know, done something to promote pageantry in the country. And it was all the boo-hooing. And she said, well, you know, Jerome's going to be moving on to do other things, but he's still going to be our host. Um, but since then, the committee has all but burned me at the stake threatening me <laughs> i can't go anywhere because it's like, i have to continue on, my work so, yeah, so i i will i will continue you know in the organization but sometimes you know you have to realize that when it's time for you when your role shifts and changes mm -hmm. and you have to realize when you have to give other people an opportunity to do other things and sometimes so you want me to take over yeah no they can't no 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 so we, sometimes we have to be a delicate organization you know we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this no, will be on my own show. No, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you're an odd woman. <laughs> that can't work. But no, you know, um, so I'm, I'm excited. We have a great committee. Let me just say that. Michelle Malcolm and I have been in the trenches with this from day one. What was day one? We started in 2006, and I can tell you what happened. And how, yeah, how it started. And so a particular member of our now committee, Leslie Miller at the time. Leslie competed in a Miss Bahamas back then. And there were some things that, were, that happened. Mm -hmm. I was hosting that particular show. And to this day, I can't tell you what happened between the results leaving the judges and the results getting to the podium to me. They didn't come as they normally came around the back of the stage and so Anyway, mm. it was such a fiasco. Leslie went into such a depression after that, that Michelle, who was her, and still is a very good friend at the time, decided to step in and do some things. She said, I'm going to find some international pageants for this young lady to go to just to, to help her regain her self-esteem. And she went off and uh, she won the international competition that she was in. Now, see, this giving me goosebumps because I know she's a beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. So, yeah, and I want to do that too. What Michelle happened? said at that point, uh, Michelle said at that point, I, she went to speak to now the late Pastor Miles Monroe, who was a pastor at the time, and she said, Pastor, I'm, I'm tired of what's going on with pageantry in this country. You know, it's really in the dumps, and um, there's so much um, going on, and, and, you know, so much unfairness, and so much scarless behavior, and even the caliber of girls. And so he said, Michelle, do something about it. So she mean, what, what you mean do something? He said, right. change it, start your own organization. Yeah. And so without having a franchise, anything, we started the Miss Bahamas organization. And must be about a week after we went public, put out a press release, the Miss World organization contacted Michelle and said, would you like the franchise for Miss World? Well, holy. And that's really how we started. We started on a wing and a prayer. Yes, I was going to um, say. Several years we later, we got the Miss Universe franchise. We held three franchises. Um, we had Miss Earth as well, which were the three largest. Correct. But you cannot imagine the financial strain that that placed on us. Three girls, three international pageants, three wardrobes. Three. And we just got to the point where financially we couldn't do it anymore. And sometimes you have to make a hard but sensible decision. So we relinquished two of the franchises. We kept Miss World. Um, Universe now has changed hands, I think, about three or four times since we have uh, you know, relinquished it. Um, and we keep the Miss World brand, one, because it's the oldest and largest pageant in the world, but also we find that the girls get a much better experience when they go to Miss World, when they go okay. to Miss Universe. And all of us know Miss Universe because it's on this side of the world. And it's on, you know, it was on NBC. Right, and right. I think now it's on Fox. Because I was trying to think yeah, about yeah. the differences, so too. Yeah, yeah. So we okay. know Miss Universe because that's on the, you know, and then Trump had it for all those years. Yes. And so we saw it. But when they go to Miss Universe, it's like TV, 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 TV. They're there just working on that TV show. Miss World is about experiencing the culture, and they get immersed, and they spend one month, like the Queen this year is going to Thailand. Yes. For a month. Wow. And the experience Who's really changes their lives. Uh, the Miss Bahamas organization pays for her to go there. Right. So now, we'll we pay a franchise fee to Miss World every year because it's, it's, you know, it's like if you have a McDonald's franchise, you have to pay, you have to pay for the franchise. So we own the franchise for Miss World, so we pay X amount of 1000 every year. And we, of course, have to send her there and have to provide the wardrobe. And once she's there, Miss World takes care of everything. And that's where our franchise fee comes okay. in. Okay. Um, so really, that's how it works. Um, and Miss World also requires a beauty with a purpose. So what we do is we ensure that all of our contestants complete a beauty with a purpose project to get ready to be queen. So you can't just show up and be beautiful. You have to submit. But how long 
of training do they have? Oh, well, she, our queen leaves the beginning of November. So from May 27th, the day after she won, her <laughs> training started. Wake up, let's go. We had we had lunch with her twelve o'clock the next day and it was on. <laughs> From there. All your plan to yeah, yeah. We're like, listen, you belong to us for a year. We're um, she starts working with Alive in another couple of weeks. They employ her for a year this year. Oh, that's Previously, cool. it was the Island Game Foundation. They hired our queens for a year, mm -hmm. and we give our queens a job to ensure that they have the flexibility to train, ah. to travel, to do. Because listen, if you have someone that's working for your organization every other day, they out every other weekend, they travel. She has training. She's Still gone for a month. No she go, they can be like, sweet girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I you love need, you, but I just you, can't. You need to go be Miss Barbas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, um, and then we spend these next few months preparing her. So she's prepared locally. We have an international trainer. She goes to Miss World with six to seven suitcases of clothes. Yes, I remember seeing your video <laughs> last Those year. Those things have to be provided. Jeez. Um, and so, you know, it is a huge job. It's a, it never stops. It's a year-round job. Um, and we've been doing it for a long time. You can imagine having to do it for three girls. How are contestants chosen? Sure. So contestants will apply directly to the organization. Uh, we have a vetting process. Um, you have to be a certain height, a certain weight, a certain look. Um, and then we also have district directors who represent the various islands. Like we have a district director for Long Island. There's one for Eleuthera, Grand Bahama, Abaco. Um, New Providence and several district directors who also choose their own girls and they enter the pageant as Miss Eleuthera who is our current queen or Miss Long Island or Miss Grand Bahama or Miss Abaco. We've had a Miss Acklands, we've had an Inagua, we've had Ragged Island, we've had Exuma. Because I saw this year there was Miss Balmore Island. Right, so, so okay, so obviously New Providence has the largest concentration. Right. So you can't just have one New Providence. Right. So we have to break out New Providence. So we'll have a Crystal Key, we'll have a Balmoral, we have some other smaller keys which allow more girls from New Providence to but participate. How do, they, how, how do they say that I'm going to represent Balmoral Island? Well, w the director for Balmoral. Okay. Yeah, so somebody has the directorship for Balmoral. Ah, and that's how it works. I and see. like if you wanted to compete for Long Island, mm -hmm. you could based on your lineage. So right. even though you may not have been born or lived there, like your grandmother could be from Long Island, or your grandmother could be from Abaco, or your granddad could be from Harbor Island, or wherever. And so you can compete based on your lineage. So it is really a national pageant when right. you think about it. Okay. And also the University of the Bahamas sends yes, a, a contestant. So every year for the past, I think this is now our fourth year or our third year, uh, UB, whoever wins Miss UB, will enter our pageant. And if the winner cannot compete for whatever reason, then the first runner-up or somebody else from the university who competed will compete in our pageant. Oh, this is good stuff. So, yeah, it, it, it's exciting, you know, it, it's fun. All right, so we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You talk about the juicy cool. stuff? And, um, no, the, the last. <laughs> we always talk the oh, juicy come stuff last. <laughs> come on, All right. man. We'll be right back. <laughs> come on into the Quality Home Center. You will see the savings from when you enter. Your one-stop department store with so much niceness. Friendly staff, great atmosphere, low prices. They got brand name appliances, furniture, hardware, electronics, home decor, toys and apparel, shop and save. There's no need to go away. Stay at home and save big. Stop and shop at the quality home center. Home center, spend less and live better. Welcome to Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, open 24 hours a day, ensuring both our inpatients and the general public have access to a full service pharmacy whenever they need it most. At Doctors Hospital, we care about making you feel safe and at home. We know our way around a counter with our team of highly trained, knowledgeable pharmacists available 24 hours a day. We offer a complete range of pharmacy services to all our patients. The pharmacy at Doctors Hospital, open 24 hours a day. This segment is brought to you by Quality Home Center. Spend less, live better. Welcome back to the No Filter Show. I really wish you could be here behind the scenes to catch all yeah, the jokes. Uh, really. My eyes are now watering and I'm like, my neck is trying to get messed up. So, so we're here to roll soya and we're talking about Miss Bahamas and I'm trying to get some of more uh, behind the scenes, what all goes on because we don't know. And then I'm a person, I start asking all these questions, and I say, before I start asking questions, is this anybody? Let me go straight to the source. Smart, hey. I'm not a typical gossiper. I just go straight to, to like a gossip to read stuff. There you so, go. Jerome, I have another question. I want to be a judge. So, 
Like, he always, when I ask, and he's, he looks at me like I'm joking with these questions. I would be a great okay, judge because I don't serious. lie. Mm-hmm. So tell me how a judge is chosen and how okay. do I become a judge? Well, first of all, um, judges are chosen, and we have a mix. He's going to say everything that you're not, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we have local and international judges. We bring in, um, we try to bring a majority of international judges for, for a number of reasons. They, they don't have no horse in the race. Yeah. And then, you know, and at the end of it, they don't have to be harassed by, you know, oh, why you didn't choose my child? You cheat. That kind of, you cheat, da, da, da. So what you'll have is, like, for our preliminary competitions, we use local judges. Okay. And every preliminary has different judges. So that way, we that we at least try to ensure some integrity. Yeah, it's a little fair. You know, mm-hmm. um, but when we come to that pageant itself, we have a mix of majority international judges, some local, but experts in pageantry, in fashion, uh, merchandising, marketing, even. Um, every once in a while, we may have a, a celebrity judge. Like in the past, we've had like a Nicole Murphy, mm-hmm. who's been a judge for us. We've had. Um, she used to be a. She used to be a, a, a Miss Universe one time. Uh, Wendy Wendy Fitzwilliams from uh, uh-huh. Miss Trinidad was a Miss Universe. So we but we try to bring people in who have an eye for international pageantry. So it doesn't make sense for you to go after who is appealing or who appeases Bahamians. And that may sound a little right, right. A, a, a little you know harsh, but at the end of the day, this girl has to go off internationally. You representing me. So we have to ensure that when she stands on the stage, she's standing toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder with what the international community is looking for. Correct. And I think sometimes we get caught up in the, oh, uh, we because I know Gina and because I like Gina, Gina should win. Right. But if you're honest with Gina, you say, you know, Gina, maybe you didn't win because you weren't the best candidate. But the judges really have no horse in the race. I know it's short. And let me tell you something that I, uh, and it, it, the, the, the system, it, there's so much integrity to the system that as a committee, we don't even know who the judges are. Oh. Michelle Malcolm, our president, mm-hmm. chooses the judges, right down to the hotel bookings. The hotel can't tell you who's coming in. All they know is judge one, two, three, four. Wow. The person who buys the tickets on behalf of the organization, the financial director, will only know the international judges but not the local judges. Right. We generally find out as a committee and as a grouping who the judges are maybe two days before the competition. We have had in the past <clears throat> someone who was associated with our committee who was favoring a particular contestant, told that contestant who the judges were, and three of the ju- or two of the judges were contacted by a contestant before coming in. That year, it was so bad, we contacted, at the time it was the Miss Universe organization, and said, we, well, Michelle contacted, that, contacted them and said, we have a problem, we have a pool of tainted judges. So the organization said, don't get rid of them. What you do is, if you have five, choose six more. That year, we had 11 judges. Awesome. <laughs> we take that, I, I, I mean, that taught us a, a great lesson. Right. We take that very, very seriously. The judges are given, given strict criteria on what to look for. They have an opportunity to interview the contestants the day before the pageant so they know who they are, they talk to them. They have a judge's handbook, which has all of the information on every um, contestant. They're given the information on contestants prior to coming. So some judges are far as far as New York or wherever, and they're looking at the girls' social media. Right, of course. Before they come. So they know who they are. So we always tell the girls, don't lie, because the judges will know whether you're telling the truth or not. And so... You know, they're human, and I always think pageants are very subjective. You and I could sit at a table, and we are like two totally different people. Right. Of course, because the same way, thank God, everybody don't have the same taste in man or woman, because there'll be a problem. You understand. So this is my question. When the night happens of the actual event mm-hmm. of the whole, you know, shabam with the judges that fly in, blah, 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 how much points is worth that night? Okay. So what happens is you compete to get to the top five. Okay. And then there's also, uh, there was an instant save. So someone who didn't make the top five gets in by public vote. So the public is able to save somebody. People okay? choice like me. Yeah. So once those top five, now top six are chosen, they all start over. All scores oh, are thrown out. From zero. So you start from zero. Ah. And that's why a lot of so people, are people con- think, confused. oh, but she did so well Correct. throughout. Correct. How she won all of these the categories. War, and, and I tell people it's like John Cadu. You could win best music, you know, best uh, choreography, bestest, but don't win the parade. Right. Um, and sometimes those other categories do not count towards overall points, like top model, photogenic. The, 
they don't, they're separate awards. They don't count towards overall scoring. And I don't care how many things you won coming in. Once you make it to the semifinals, once you make it to the top five or top six, all scores are thrown out. I hope you all listen. And then the okay. judges choose the top five. So, sorry, they, they choose from that five or six, the top three. Uh -huh. Okay? And then what you have is the public vote comes in again. So you have five judges in the room. Public vote is judge number six. However, how the public vote works is you are scored based on the percentage. So if 5,000 people vote, mm -hmm. and 5,000 people, sorry, 5,000 people vote, and 3,000 of them vote for Gina, Gina only gets 10 points. The person who gets the second highest only gets nine points, then eight, then, and that's nice. how it goes. So if 5,000 or 5 million people vote, the votes aren't cumulative. It's whoever gets the highest amount. It's basically first, second, third, third place, four. boom. And then, once the top three are chosen, the judges then get to choose, not by points, winner, first runner-up, second runner-up. All right. Okay. And so, and again, all of that is, is uh, all of that is overseen by an accounting firm. Right. So we have auditors who, and only two, two people in the room see the results, you know, the auditors and myself when they hand them to me on stage. Right. So the big joke is I always tell them, you know, everybody always stares at me to see my facial expression, but I'm always, you know, you're very right. stone-faced. Right. Um, and interestingly, you know, Michelle told me something the other day that really, you know, it really touched me. She had a particular judge asked her after judges interview this year, you know, um, would you have an issue with any particular contestant? And she looked at him and she said, you know, whomever you choose, we will work with. In that moment, she had an opportunity to say, I don't like so-and-so, or I don't want so-and-so. She said, but she looked at him, turned, and she said, whomever you choose, we will work with. Right. That's the whole thing of you be, be the me, judge. Gina, let me I'm tell not you. the judge. Let me tell you. Some years, you are on pins and needles. Of course. Because you know some girls can be difficult. Yes. But it is not our job to choose. Right. And whomever is chosen, whether you like them or not, you have to suck it up, and the year could be a very long time or a very short time. You know, uh, and it's not for us to say, oh, we didn't want you, or we didn't like you. That doesn't even come into force. People always ask, who's your favorite, who you like? And I said, I don't have one. I never get into the mindset of who I think should win because it's going to affect how I deal with that girl it's true. after the crown. It's true. And what about, um, how old do you have to be? Um, I think the, it's 17 is the, is the minimum age, and I think we go up to about 25, something like that. That's, whatever the Miss World range is, that's what we do. And that's another thing that people seem to miss. Whatever happens internationally, we mirror. Right. We can't make up our own rules. I remember last year, like, two ladies wanted to fight me because they were like, how could all the scores be thrown that I never heard but that in my life? And I'm like, have you ever watched Miss Universe? Right. Have you ever watched Miss World? Have you ever watched? That's what happens. Once you make it to the semifinals, all scores are thrown out. You're on, on a level playing field again. You know, you, you, you fight to get to that next level, and then the judges then start to, to judge you again, all from a level playing. You could imagine what would happen if the scores were carried over, you know, the madness that would create. But I honestly, mm. this is why I think I, was, I got confused. You, with, people because, think that way. I said, you know, I, that's exactly many times I saw, but this girl won all these categories. Right. I'm, what, what but it would, it, it, that's just not how it's done. Okay. And then, uh, you know, we introduced the public vote, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. And I like that. And it's to, give, it's to give the public an opportunity to be engaged. Yes. And to have a say. But obviously, a public vote is not going to negatively impact the outcome. You have five trained, hand-picked professionals in the room. Right. Public vote is one judge. I we keep saying that? One judge. So no matter how many people vote, the, 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 the idea is to get people to vote for you as the contestant, and that will help you. But that's certainly not going to sway the vote in any particular way. So what I do know for sure is if I go to Miss Bahamas, because I'm only 25, uh, I could get <laughs> With no children. <laughs> no more. No children, too? And you can't be married. I said, oh, jeez. <laughs> I waited too late. And you have to be like, at least like five, four? I think five, five three, five, four. Is, yeah, that's really? Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. So I hope you all got the whole scoop on Miss Bahamas. I learned a lot. I'm glad that it was cleared up. And I hope that any of you are co were confused like me, you understood exactly what happened. There wasn't no cheating and all that. Oh, every year. Some, every, every year somebody cheats. Every, every year. Every year I say they cheat. Yeah, but now they I cheat. learn. Yeah. So when we come back, we're going to go on to our head and all segment. Awesome. And uh, then we'll get some juicy stuff. See you in a minute.
No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas, Bank of the Bahamas, Quality Home Center, Dairy Queen, Chef Boyardee, Boss, BAF Financial and Insurance, Checkers Cafe, Doctors Hospital, Marathon Vet Clinic, Mesa Grill, Live to Fish, Lowe's Pharmacy, Riley Boys Auto and Car Rental, Ultra Games, and The Pediatric Place. Hey DQ fans, everyone knows DQ has the best sweet treats, but we also have delicious and affordable food options too. Presenting the DQ $7 Fan Meal. For just $7, choose from one of three delicious oven hot sandwiches, chicken bacon ranch, grilled chicken, or turkey BLT. Plus enjoy a DQ sundae, a soda, and a chip, all for just $7. This is one ridiculous deal you don't want to miss. DQ, it's fan food, not fast food. Phone is good. Internet is good. TV is good. But why just pick one thing when you can have everything with Tria? Only $99 a month gets you phone, internet, and cable. That's everything you need for $99 a month. Ask for Tria. Call 601-2200 or email residentialsales at cablebahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. Home to daddy. Where's the smallest fish? Why, Casey? This is heavy. Yes, yeah, boy. Is it? No, no, no. Wow. Biggest fish on the boat today. Yeah. That's my fish. Why you want to catch a fish today? Another one, baby. Another one. We already found some fish, but we're going to find some more. One, two, three, four. Plan the best day of your life today. Check us out at www.live2.fish or on Facebook, Instagram, and TripAdvisor. Email us at info at live2.fish. This segment is brought to you by Dairy Queen. Fan food, not fast food. Hi, we're back to the No Filter Show. <laughs> and I always ask um, Miguel if I look slim. And he's always, I got you. Oh, God. That's really not an answer. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he, he probably does a Gina, you're not slim, get over it. <laughs> Period. Okay, so now it's time for our head and old segment. And uh, we're using Jerome because... You know what's funny is at the very, very beginning of our adventure, Jerome has been with us. And um, I want to share some, uh, it's so funny, it's, uh, our favorite story, I could say, with uh, Jerome and I, when, um, first of all, we <laughs> were going on the first plane to go to the first flight out after the hurricane. Mm -hmm. and, it's um, Hurricane Matthew, right? Yes. yes there was, was uh, long no, long. no, no, that was Joaquin. Yeah. Oh, okay, Joaquin. Yes, See, yes, yes. He's, okay. He's, but, he's yeah, sorry. It, it, nothing, this gray, you know, this gray, yeah, ain't for nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, so Jerome, so, Jerome's like, I'm coming. You're going and I'm like, I'm coming and I'm bringing the camera. So we go out to the airport and we put on 40,000 pounds worth of stuff in the plane. Then at first, um, some of the employees would not allow us to get on the plane mm -hmm. and said it's not safe and blah, blah, blah. And only these particular individuals are allowed on a plane and I was like, well, you think you're going on my plane with my stuff? Ain't that not happening? And it was so funny. It was me, Leah, Christina, and Lana and we all picked up our cell phones one minute. Jerome says, get the camera out! Get the camera out! It's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> these four women are going to go crazy out there. And um, I'll never forget, we called Henry Woods and he was like, let him on the plane. No way. I was like, yeah. override, boss man here. Mm -hmm. So we get on this plane and we go and we, we remember the, the pilots actually had to sign a waiver saying that they're willing to take the chance. Take the risk, yeah. Because, because the, airport, the, the airport was so closed yes. because it was flooded. Yes. And they weren't quite sure if, if we could lie. Right. So we so had to sign yeah, this. We're was going like, on this plane full of supplies. Yes. And it was yeah. so funny. So we landed and the, the airport was flooded. And we okay. landed, <laughs> and then as we were traveling over, we, the first place we, we went was the, with us, was Long Island. Mm -hmm. And as we landed, the vehicles, you know, and they see the plane, so they started coming to the airport and loading us up. And I'll never forget, so our job was to distribute the food, and Jerome's job was to go get the real footage. 
So now I drove to no Long Island like that, and I'm driving. And Mind I my people from Long Island, you know. And <laughs> and <laughs> I'm crying and crying and crying, and Jerome's like, why did you come? You're, all you're doing is crying. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. And I was just like, it's very emotional. And Leah, Leah, Leah did the, I don't even know, you're not going on a plane anymore, because yeah, all you're doing yeah. is cry. So we go, and then Jerome saw this. So in between Long Island, there was this huge lake where they couldn't get from one side to yeah. the other. Me, um, wait, back up a minute. I'm hiking a ride. Well, you was with me. Yeah, we were hiking a ride. My yeah, niece. yeah, we were hiking a ride. We were back on the truck. Oh, right, on the back he was in the back truck. of the truck. And it was and two places. Yeah. Also, I was in the back of his truck. Yeah. And he goes, drop me here. Jim, she's tapping. Drop me here, drop me here. And remember we was passing out the pizza? Yeah, we were yeah. Marco's pizza. Marco's pizza. We was giving passing out pizza. Um, and it was so funny. Jerome goes, drop me here because I want to film here. And I was like, Jerome, when I come back, because we have to be back <laughs> to the plane before sunset. There is no lights on the runway. When I come back, you need to be here. Okay, Gina. So anyway, boy, I go and I'm looking for my family because I haven't heard from them. So that was a mission what I was on. So we go. I find my family. Then as I start seeing old people and children on the side of the road, we start picking them up. Because I was like, I didn't realize how bad it was. Until we got Lassau, there. Yeah. And we started putting all of these people on the truck. And I'm like, I'm taking you back. I'm taking you back. So then we go dry. I have my my um, my sister-in-law. And we have a, she has a disabled special needs child. So I was like, you can't stay here. We have to go to Nassau. So she's in the truck. So we drive down. And we're looking for Jerome. Typical Can't journalist. Typical journalist. Follow and the story. I was like, <laughs> where this dude is, the flight is going. And I look at, look at, can't sun, find sun, him. Sun coming over yeah, the horizon like, now. All I'm seeing is like, hmm, Jerome's going to sleep in Long Island <laughs> tonight because Gina getting on the plane. So I cannot find him anywhere. And all I was sitting there. Of course, no is, cell service. What is it? There's no cell service. And a lot of vehicles didn't even have fuel because they already mm -hmm. ran out. And all I was thinking was there's only a certain point he could have gone because you can't get over to the other side. You Listen, so I get, I go down to the airport. I was like, you all see Jerome? No one see Jerome. And in the meantime, I'm picking up all these people. We're picking up all people on the side of the road. The plane is on the run. So <laughs> here's the plane. We know, we pull up. There's no plane. And we're like, where's the plane? So I told the driver, pull up a little bit more. And the plane's down to the end of the runway, running, getting ready to leave. Leah, the soldier, is outside, like, you're not leaving without them. As a, almost like a, as a body barricade. It, it was so funny. The plane. So we get on the plane, and we have all these old people, and we're loading up, and here comes Jerome running. <laughs> I, we, I caught a ride. I said to somebody, I said, I got to get to the airport, because I can't get left here. And they dropped he, us. I won't do very well without air conditioning. Yeah, they dropped us, and here I come running down the runway. <laughs> Backpack cameraman with his equipment, and we run in it to was, the blade. It was so funny. I don't yeah. know, forget. We see him, and he's wearing these coral pants, okay? So he's like glowing, and he's running, and I'm sitting there going, This dude, I said, I, You? And he was like, Y'all wasn't gonna leave me. <laughs> <laughs> so we go, and we're on the blade, and I'll never forget. It was just like a big, we had kids, it was piled up with kids, piled up with old people, and we were to capacity, and the pilot, the, they said, we're going to stop in Auckland. In Auckland. Yes, I was we're like, going to pick up Auckland. some people. No, I, something said to me, we're not going back to Nassau. Like, I, I don't know direction, but <laughs> just something in my mind. I kept looking on the window. I was like, it doesn't feel like we're going back to Nassau. <laughs> Where are we going? And all of a sudden, we're going to make a stop in Auckland. Make a stop. Well, I had to give me, what stop. are we doing in Auckland? So yeah. more people start coming on the plane, and we're like, where are these people going? And let me tell you something. We throw a child on our lap fast. Because yeah. when it comes to the, my weakness is old people and kids. Yeah. And we wasn't leaving them. And I, I think that when it, it was like an awesome movement. I, you, I'll tell you what happened, too. There was a, a kid that came on the plane on Auckland. I think he was by himself. And they were sending him to family. And he was crying. Because I guess he was frightened and everything he had gone through. And I got him and I sat him in between myself and the camera at the time. And I said, don't cry. I said, what's your name? What do you like doing? And then he started talking, and he calmed himself down. And, uh, and I, I, I have to tell you, in that moment, like that whole experience taught me that whatever, you know, whenever it counts, the Hamians come together. Yes. Uh, and I still look back at that experience, and some things we can't even say on the air. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't want to get people in trouble. No. But we, we really came together, and what I saw was it didn't matter what color you were, socioeconomic background. It didn't matter. It was like, our people are in trouble. We need to help. Exactly. You know, it, it, and and it, I keep saying, when are we going to write this movie? Yeah, 
we got to do a movie. That was, let me tell yeah. you something. It was so it was so amazing. I, the story of the the guy who rescued his family by using the the door of the refrigerator. Yes. He had to bring his family. Like they were in the back road, and he was like he wasn't sure where he was going. It was pitch black. The floodwaters came, and I think he had like a special need family that member. Was, that was he, my my uh, yeah, my brother-in-law. Yeah. And had to. And one was tied to a tree and it, all this. And the, the, those stories. It, yeah. it's, just, it's just crazy. Yeah. And yeah. I can tell you, I think that when it comes to head nodes, and that was my earring that dropped out. I thought it was a mic, but so mm-hmm. we don't have to worry about that. So when it comes to head nodes, I can tell you, I think that um, we've come so far, and it's so nice to, to talk back on a lot of these cool memories. Thank God there's no more storms have been here yeah. for a while, yeah. Yeah. and we've still been helping. You've still been involved. You're still on our page I and can't, all that. And I can't tell. It's like, I remember when, when it started, I I, I, reached, I think I, I reached out to Leah. I was like, Leah, what are you all doing? Right. <laughs> exactly. What is this what thing? You up to? And she was like, well, we're just trying to get together to help with the hurricane. And I said, whatever you need. Mm-hmm. I said, however I can help, I'm on board. And I think that's when it started. Yeah, because we, we just, was like, we got to get the camera there. Because yeah. nobody knew what was going on. Yeah. And yeah. then when you, it was, it, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I really, um, I, I appreciate those times. And I think it's so... Because to this day, right now, with when it comes to our group, it, mm-hmm. it, I love the fact that if somebody really needs something, guaranteed, they're going to pull together and they're going to say, let's make it happen. Every once in a while, I'm somewhere and some good guy walked to me, but you remember me? We was uh, on the plane in Long Island. I was like, oh, yeah, that's I know you no, from. That was quite a memorable <laughs> yeah, experience yeah, that, when that, all that happened was on quite, that plane. That was quite an experience. Yeah. But, but you know, I, and it's the fear of the unknown, you don't know what you're going to meet. You only are getting bits and pieces of stories, you know, of what's happened and what's on the ground and who needs help. And, and you go in, and you know, I've been doing this a while, but you go in and there is this almost sense of foreboding. Like, what am I going to find? Oh, right. And you get there and, you know, there's, there's, there's mud on the shelves in the food store. Remember all the food was there. There's just mounds of food, you know, where there's just people are just cleaning. You and there was pe- a house that was completely gutted, and you see a yeah. tub, then you see a fan, then and you know the you know the 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 amount of anguish that you see on, on people's faces and the pain that you see, and then there's the uncertainty, and then there's even a sense of hopelessness because you realize you're going back to electricity, right? You're going back to a home, yes, and you have to leave these people now probably in the same condition that you met them, with just a few supplies, whatever we were able to bring on the plane. Right. You know, um, and I, I, I have to say I applaud you all for, for what you did because that was a movement. That wasn't just a relief effort. That was a movement, and people came, and they gave, and they showed up, and they did. And, and it, I, at points, I know you all were overwhelmed. Yes. I, you know, that night, I had nine little girls sleeping on my ground in the front. It was so funny because they had beds, but they all mm-hmm. slept in the front room. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, one of them, I'll never forget, four years old, came into my room in the middle of the night where she was singing about the hurricane. You know where, and you know how mommy and daddy was in there, but all I kept saying to these people was, your kids cannot stay here. Mm-hmm. You know, bring them and I'll take them. And then the next day, some of their aunts came to pick them up. Because remember, we came back in late yeah, at night. Yeah, we came in late and with a plane full of people. Yes, and, and, and all the time I say, you know, it's just amazing. And, and to see the emotion went, because some people didn't know I was bringing their kids. Yeah. I was just calling them from the airport. Hey, I have a package for you. you. Come. Come yeah. down to the warehouse. And, yeah. when, you know, when... When they saw their kids, the emotion and oh my goodness, I wish we had that on film. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah but anyway, right. everybody, um, so that's our head nose segment. That's our little adventure and uh, my fondest memory with Jerome. Let me tell you, I, it was so it was so awesome. So Jerome, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me on. I, I appreciate not having to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate being on the other minutes. side. Yeah, listen, it, it's a it's a huge relief. It's a burden lifted. Thank you. Okay, yeah. so next time you come, you pay me then. Huh? Okay. <laughs> you didn't say in what. All right, deal. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for watching. And I'll be right back with my little rant at the end, and I'll see you later. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas, Bank of the Bahamas, Quality Home Center, Dairy Queen, Boss, BAF Financial and Insurance, Checkers Cafe, Doctors Hospital, Marathon Vet Clinic, Mesa Grill, Live to Fish, Lowe's Pharmacy, Riley Boys Auto and Car Rental, Ultra Games, and The Pediatric Place. Hi, everybody. So welcome back to the No Filter Show for the last segment with me, Gina Nolte. And this is a time when I want to say 
even though I like to have my little rant, complain thing, I also like to encourage people always to be the change and to let's try to encourage one another to be nice to each other. You have nothing nice to say, don't say it. You have some people who are just simply mean and get me sick. Now, I'm a person, I am very vocal, as you know. I say what I have to say when I get upset or whatnot, but you don't have to be mean and just cruel. And there are some people who, I swear the devil lives inside them and they're simply just wicked. That's just how it is. So I say that because the, the other day, not even the other day, yesterday I was driving and there was this guy and a girl, and they're probably about 25, 26, and they were walking with a baby. The guy was holding a baby. The baby had to be about six, seven months old. So baby, baby. And it started to spry, and I was going down the highway and turned on to Blue Hill. So I turned on to Blue Hill, and they were just before the turn, and I was sitting there thinking about this baby and looked up at the sky and it was black and I said, this is gonna bust. So I stopped, broke the law, stopped on this side and I was trying to get their attention because it started coming down and they started running and I was like, come, come in the car, come in the car. So they jumped in the car and I didn't even know these people and I was asking where they were going and he said he was just gonna go to the, um, they was dropping their baby to the preschool or daycare center or whatever on Robinson Road. So he actually said to me, he was like, it's amazing how all these people passed. And of course, he didn't say Conky Joe, which, he, which I would rather be called. But anyway, he said, and a white person had to stop to pick me up. And I said to him, listen, it ain't about color, you know. I said, these days, it's so scary what all happens. I am a woman in the vehicle alone. And people actually say, I don't want to pick up somebody as a serial killer type of thing. And it's so sad to know what our country has come to. Because even down to the children, it starts pouring rain. And there's all these kids and they're running. And I, I'm sitting there and it's unfortunate because they were running the opposite way. So I couldn't stop, you know, to pick them up. And I pick up kids all the time. And I sit there and say, you know, what is our country coming to? And it's just so... It's really sad and cruel and I don't understand why we can't work together once again and be like how it used to be. And I, I hope that we all say to each other, let's help our own and let's come together. And you know, that's how, what we are about on, on the Head Knowles page and with me. And I am that person who I hope and I believe and I say, and y'all don't mind all this much as Rao, you know, I really want us to be work together and help each other and if we work as a team we could make so much changes in the world and make it better and it's okay to let someone out of a corner it's okay for to, to help someone's kid it's okay to pick up someone on the side of the road or to give someone um a couple of dollars because i can tell you many times i go and i don't have cash and then the atm's not working and i don't have any gas in my car and one time i actually saw somebody and he gave me money for gas and i felt like wow but we have a big project that was a big, big surprise that's going to happen. And anyway, so remember to be the change you want to see. Don't just complain about it. Do something about it. All right. Hope everybody has a great day. See you next week for the last segment of the first season. The last segment. The last episode of the first season. Have a good day, everybody. And remember, be the change. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Have a good week. Happy hump day. Hi. Promotional consideration provided by Oasis Shopping and Quality Home Center.